Hey folks, this is Ida Doris from uh, TaylorMade Roastery in Oslo in Norway. Uh, we are super excited to be part of this year's edition of Leaderboard. Um, as soon as I got the email, uh, I was so excited because I, I love this concept and it's just such a, a fun thing and, and uh, something that, that everyone can enjoy, especially if you want to learn more about coffee. This is just such a great opportunity. So we were super excited that we were, were able to take part this year. Um, the coffee that we sent might have been a little bit tricky to identify for you guys. Uh, it was definitely a surprise for us when, when we first tried it on our cupping table. Uh, I, I very distinctly remember like the first sip we all took. We were we were all just like, whoa, it's it's so fresh and zingy and it was not what we were expecting at all from, from this particular uh, coffee or this particular region. Um, so the coffee we sent is, uh, it's actually a coffee from Uganda. Um, it's a concept coffee from the Kinga Collective, uh, which is a blend of cherries from, from local farmers in the Kanungu district. Uh, the cherries are all different varieties of SL. Uh, in this particular blend, you'll find uh, SL34, SL28, and SL14. Um, as for processing, it is actually a washed coffee, uh, but it's also undergone a little bit of dry fermentation. Uh, the process is that the cherries have been floated and pulped, uh, but they've not been demucilaged, uh, and the coffee is put into fermentation tanks a little bit before then being dried on raised tables, uh, partially in the shade. Um, when we then received the green, we roasted it on our wonderful Loring S15 Falcon uh, in batches of 13 kilos at a time with a pretty simple high energy roast profile with a, a pretty short development time. Um, this has resulted in a coffee that's pretty lightly roasted. Um, it's averaging out at 53 on the color track. Uh, which for those who don't know, the color track is a, it's, it's a laser tool that we use to measure the color of the coffee. It's how we uh, keep consistency in, in all of our roast profiles. Um, to give you a little bit of a framework there, our espe espresso roasts are usually around 59 to 61 uh, on the color track. So like higher the number, darker the roast basically. Uh, so 59 to 61 on espresso roasts, and then um, our very lightest roast, we usually go at around 51 to 52. So this one sitting at, at 53, it is a pretty, pretty light roast, which often is to be expected from, from African coffees, and especially from, from Nordic roasteries as well. Um, so what we've ended up with is delicious Kanungu coffee is a surprisingly fresh cup. Like I mentioned, our, our reaction was just like, whoa. Um, it's actually also the first Ugandan coffee we've ever roasted here at TaylorMade. Obviously, Taylor has has a lot of experience with, with roasting all kinds of coffees from before and, and also Ugandan coffees. But yeah, this was, this was our first Ugandan offering um, from, from TaylorMade as a roastery. Uh, the tasting notes that were very present for us were, were that very distinct malic acid that you typically associate with uh, like green apples, uh, fresh, ripe uh, Granny Smith apples. Um, but it's also got a little bit of a fresh herbal tinge of, of lemongrass, which again brings, brings all of that like freshness and, and acidity to, to the coffee. Um, the thing that I found particularly fascinating about this coffee is that it's got a really smooth mouthfeel. And especially when you then consider those very prominent acidic flavor notes of, of like green apple and lemongrass, um, a smooth mouthfeel isn't necessarily what you, what you expect. Like um, when you have that, uh, that like, 
zingy uh, taste. Yeah, you kind of expect, especially when you when you think of malic acid, you kind of expect that like that tingly feeling you get when you eat like sour candy. Um, but this cup is surprisingly like smooth and and round, while still keeping some of that acidity uh, very prominently. Um, when you taste coffee, you usually bring in some of your own expectations. And, and with Ugandan coffee, I don't necessarily expect those like fresh, zesty acidities in the same way that I would um, when I'm tasting other African coffees, which is probably why this one surprised us as much as, as it did, because typically uh, I would expect a Ugandan coffee to have more of that like rich stone fruit, like chocolatey notes. Um, so this one was definitely a delight. Uh, unfortunately, we're all out of it now. It was a really small lot and, and it went really fast, uh, which is such a shame because I can imagine this being like the perfect summer coffee, like drinking a cup of this while the sun rises and you're sitting out eating breakfast on your balcony. Um, we hope that you guys enjoyed it uh, and that it didn't cause too much confusion on the cupping table because it's it's definitely an odd one out when uh, when it comes to what you normally would expect from, from Ugandan coffees, um, which is probably why we enjoyed it so much as well, because a lot of what we do here at TaylorMade is about subversing expectations and like pushing boundaries um, and, and expanding people's coffee horizons. Uh, so, so in many ways, this was the perfect coffee to, to represent us in this year's edition of Leaderboard because it, it's kind of a microcosm of, of like what you can expect from, from TaylorMade as, as a company and, and a roastery. Um, so yeah, in closing, I guess uh, just wanna, on behalf of everyone here at TaylorMade, everyone is like super busy in production right now, which is why I'm in my little small office uh, talking to you guys. Um, but on behalf of everyone here, I just want to wish you all a, a lovely summer and uh, let's hope it'll be a good one. We, we all definitely deserve to have some good times now after all what we've been through in the last year. Uh, so enjoy your summer, taste some more refreshing and delicious coffees and uh, we'll, maybe we'll see you around. Bye!